So, um, what I thought I would uh, spend, uh, it's basically going to be this, the entire semester, more or less. There are some homework questions that I still need to do later on in the semester, but uh, <laughs> uh, even then, uh, majority of time, like uh, I've covered everything that I thought I should cover. And one of the ideas of recording these virtual class sessions is that I don't want to be doing the same thing over and over and over. And uh, what I thought would be fun for me this semester is what I'm calling problem solving with a ChatGPT 4.0. So this is me actually demonstrating uh, something that I think uh, would be an academically honest and helpful way someone could use generative AI as a kind of a virtual tutor. And uh, you do have to be careful uh, if uh, like ChatGPT is too happy to just give you all the answers and not um, make sure that you understood them. So you do have to give it some extra prompts to make sure that it actually tr tries to help you learn physics. So so let me do that. I've done this a couple times already. Um, so I'm just continuing to do that as a test student. And let me see if I can access this. Yeah, I might have to do a couple things. Yeah. Uh, I have mentioned I joke that test student is my worst student, and he is, because uh, again, he's lazy, doesn't do anything that he feels he doesn't have to. Uh, but for this demo, he won't be the worst student. He will actually work through the material with uh, uh, virtual tutor's help. So uh, let me bring up ChatGPT and uh, for this once, I'll be uh, using ChatGPT to try to learn and not, you know, cheat my way through. So um, let me first give ChatGPT this prompt to make sure that it'll actually give me appropriate help and not, you know, help me cut corners. Hi, I'm working through my electromagnetism uh, physics homework and I'm uh, trying to make sure that I'm learning the material so that I can later answer these, these questions in oral exam, which is uh, what our one required one-on-one -on -one meeting is in oral exam. Um, uh, I will give you the questions I am working on and what I have done so far. Please uh, don't um, s spoil the ending for me and just uh, help me with the next step. And it'll acknowledge. And so let me find something that's uh, substantial and go from there. Um, oh, this is actually a fun one. <laughs> Uh, I wonder how ChatGPT will work through. So this is, uh, is a skill that I believe you should work to develop, uh, you know, finding electric field by direct integration. And uh, let me just paste in the question and see what ChatGPT does. Um, But you probably don't, didn't tell you anything. Yeah, okay, I did identify this as a continuous charge distribution problem. Does you all need to use, yeah, integration to solve? Yeah, okay, it's, it's actually guessing pretty good. Uh, break the rod into small charge element. Okay, Let, let's see if we can do that. So I'll, um, I'll just draw here. Let me just scroll down a little bit so I have more space. Um, so, uh, break the rod into small charge elements. So the way I normally draw it is, um, uh, like, you know, imagine breaking up, and uh, the small charge elements being what it is, it's gonna go on forever. So really what I should do is have a representative element that's not, you know, at any special location, it's just at some position X. That's what I should do. Um, so, okay, over length of dx. OK, 
carries a small charge dq. Okay, it is dq that's equal to lambda times dx. Is it? Oh, yeah, it already gave us lambda. Okay, um, electric field from a small element. Yeah, so I think. Uh, um, so it hasn't explained yet what this uh, x is. Um, so let me see if I can get it to explain where that a plus x comes from. I drew this for step one. Uh, I'm not sure where you get the distance a plus x in step two. And I'll paste in a screenshot of what I've drawn. And maybe it will explain how it's parameterizing x, the position of the charge element. Let me explain where distance comes from. In this we calculate it. That a distance a, I have that. Consider small t cube at a position x along the rod. The distance from the small charge element to point P is the total distance from P to the near end of the road plus the additional distance X from the near end to the small charge element. Ah, okay. So that is hopefully giving you enough information to say that this is our X. And that's good because I, I was actually going to label my X this way. And um, so, you know, that's uh, all the valid choices you can make. And uh, how you make the choice will influence your the form of your integrand. So we are labeling x this way, and this x will vary from 0 to L as we go through. So, um, so in step 2, electric field from a small element. Um, so, ah, electric field expression. The contribution can be expressed as, I guess that sounds right. Um, so it, that's a Coulomb's law um, that we are using. So, uh, let me actually find it here. Electric field element DE is equal to Coulomb constant times the amount of charge lambda dx, which is there, um, lambda dx divided by a plus x squared. Okay, um, yeah, it's spelling k weird, but you know, e should be subscript. Um, but I, I think it's fine. Um, and uh, your next step is to integrate this expression over the entire length, yeah. So, Uh, I'm trying to think through, do I want to pretend that I'm having issue doing this integral or just do the integral? I guess we could just do the integral, you know, entire length of the rod. Uh, so that goes from x equals 0 to x equals L, you know, from here to here. Um, and that should give me the total electric field. And... Is this integral something that I should be able to do easily? Um, I could use u substitution for this. Uh, so uh, let me do this. Uh, I'll say that I have this integral set up uh, and that I need a reminder of integration formulas. Just want to get a clean screenshot. Um, thank you. I set up the integral um, C attached. Uh, but I think uh, I need some help. Um, what am I? Uh, um, some help with the integration formula. Correctly set up, good. <laughs> uh, and it, it fixed how it was spelling KE, now it's a subscript. 
uh, it's uh, of the form standard into um I guess it's fine um so if with this were a calculus class I would uh, want you to learn about u substitution um, you know say u is equal to a plus x plug it in do the substitution ch change the limit and that will give you um uh, and and you know then you can use power rule but you know actually I think um this is a kind of thing you could put into sage math and sage math will give you that I think uh I'm at peace with uh, people treating this as a uh, integration formula um it uh, this is not a calculus class as long as you got the concepts for setting this up um then I think setting it up here is fine now when you do it that way one thing I do want to check, is there a... Yeah, I, I don't think there's a sign error. Yeah, so... So, yeah, you can treat this like a formula. Then, you know, plugging it in. You get that. And you get that. Um, and it looks like it's done the whole thing for you. Um, but I think, uh, you know, as you're looking at the algebra, if uh, that um, feels like that's uh, helped you. And the real test is, you know, when you are asked this question again without any references, would you be able to do it? And if you feel you can do it, then you can even test yourself, you know, walk away for a day or two and then see where you are. You know, can you redo it? Let me put this in, see if we get us correct answer and uh, yeah so I'll say yeah I think so um, the system says the answer is correct and I wonder if uh, it'll push you on you to say make sure you understood it Yeah, it, that's good enough. Um, I have, have a few other questions that I want to look through with the help of ChatGPT. Um, and let me see. This is kind of similar. Let me see, see if there's another question that's worth doing. If not, I'll come back to this one. Uh, it's, it involves a different consideration than this. Here you actually have to deal with the two dimensions and pairwise cancellation and all that. Um, um so if you know what you are doing this is a super easy question you know just use Gauss's law now i think a hint will actually yeah put you there so it probably will become easy if it wasn't already easy. Um, so let me actually put it this way. So suppose uh, sometimes, you know, you have this situation where you get a correct answer and, um, and you don't feel like you learned anything from the correct answer. So let me first to get the correct answer. Uh, I got the correct answer using Gauss's law, uh, but I don't feel like I understood anything. Can you help me? And let me get the correct answer. So using Gauss's, oops, sorry, one second, my thing moved. Um, so using Gauss's law, the correct answer should be, I'm gonna use Wolfram Alpha so I don't have to look up any numbers. And uh, so Gauss's law says that the total electric flux is equal to uh, charge enclosed, or I'm going to use the version of Gauss's law that, um, that I'm trying to use more because it connects to the uh, physical co constants in a more, um, more um, kind of holistic way, maybe, is um, there's still 4 pi. Ke now there's a, a speed of light for some reason. <laughs> so that's the Gauss, version of Gauss's law I'm gonna use. So with that version, the charge enclosed is the flux 4.9 times 
times 10 to the power of 4 newton times meter squared divided by column uh, and I'm dividing the whole thing by the, what, the coefficient 4 times pi times Coulomb constant divided by speed of light squared. If I misremember the formula, um, it'll kind of show up here uh, in terms of... Wait, did I misremember something? I think I remembered it, right? Um, so I want it in Coulombs. In Coulombs. Um, I think I misunderstood something. Um, let's see here. Meter squared Newton per Coulomb per pi Coulomb constant per... Did I misremember the formula? Um, let me just do a quick derivation for myself. C is equal to 1 over square root of epsilon naught or not so oh maybe I don't need to see yet because I think k is a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so yeah I, I think it's just uh, uh, yeah yeah so uh, it, you know uh, so don't need to see square there yeah we see will come in when we do magnetism so let me get rid of the C square there. As I was saying, if I made a mistake in memorizing the formula, it'll show through in the answers. <laughs> so yeah, so I get the answer of 4.34, 4.34 times 10 to the minus 7 coulomb, which is 4.34 times 10 to the minus 1 micro coulomb. So you know, you might get all these answers and then be at a place where I was saying ChatGPT, you know, I got the correct answer, but I don't feel like I understood anything. Let's see if ChatGPT can help. Yeah. So, yeah, breaking down Gauss's law. Electric flux through closed the surface. The charge enclosed. And yeah, this is the more common version. And um, this is the version that I will try to use most of the time in this class. So, yeah, it's just uh, showing you how to get to the answer. Yeah, so that's uh, how I got the correct uh, answer. But what does this uh, have to do with uh, anything? Uh, this is might be the kind of question ChatGPT is not well equipped to answer. Uh, yeah, yeah, it can be abstract to just apply formulas. Yeah, why behind the Gauss's law? How it connects to real concepts, relation uh, fields and charges. This electric flux is directly proportional. Okay, the creates an electric field pass through the surface. Okay. The total amount of those electric field lines passing through is the flux, yeah. I have a lecture on that. Uh, the more charge you have inside the surface, the more... Yeah, that is actually the uh, the kind of the salient the point of the lecture. Um, and actually, uh, you will go through that in a worksheet lab uh, this coming week. Yeah, and this is uh, what we do later, I guess in this chapter. Yeah, so there might be some questions relating to that. This is a good explanation. Uh, yeah, I, I think this is an overall good explanation. Uh, so good. Um, that, uh, that's great. Um, I, so, so you can use generative AI for that, you know, if uh, any of the questions make you feel like, oh, I answered it, but I have no idea what the point of that question was, then um, it's uh, the nice thing about the uh, ChatGPT generative AI being an interactive tool. It can kind of respond to you asking for more. 
Whereas my video, if I simply worked out the answer and told you, ah, oh, it's so simple, then, you know, videos can't respond. All right. Um, I think, um, yeah, ChatGPT will probably get this right, but I want to get a different kind of question. Let's see. Um, in some sense, this is a little too easy, but, um, uh, let, let's uh, ask ChatGPT this, uh, and, um, and see if it, it helps explain, um, where those too easy answers come from. Um, so, uh, uh so let me just get a screenshot of this. And then I'll say, uh, just continuing the previous conversation. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, and then I'll have a new question. Uh, this is the next question I have. Uh, I think it, it's the has uh, something to do with the causes law, but I'm not sure where to start. I wonder how well it'll explain use of the Gaussian surface and all that, or if it'll just tell me the formula for electric field due to a shell of charge. So, part A, inside the sphere, um, Conducting matter sphere when they, yeah, I think that's a good enough of a reasoning to say the answer is a zero. Direct consequence of Gauss's law? I don't know if, uh, no, it's not a consequence of Gauss's law. This is a consequence of um, electrostatic assumption. Um, because then, you know, you get electric field is zero. Now, from Gauss's law, you might be able to deduce that the, the, um, the charge on the sphere, uh, it just goes to the shell. Like there's no, none of the charge remains within the volume of the sphere. Because uh, if you draw, I think it's going to explain, yeah. When you draw the Gaussian surface inside the conductor, then like the fact that enclosed the charge will be zero is the consequence of Gauss's law, starting from um, the electric field conductor inside. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, the answer is this and it connects to it the all excess charge being on the outer surface of the conductor. Outside the sphere, yeah, uh, yeah, so this is where it's just giving me the answer. Um, so let me try it, prompt it for more. I think uh, I have to show the derivation for, um, for uh, what you told me is, uh, statement. So, like uh, four points out of the. Uh, what steps would uh, I go through to prove this uh, statement? Now, it's not a uniformly charged sphere. It's a uniformly charged spherical shell. Um, yeah. So let's see if it uh, it helps us uh, draw you apply Gauss's law. Now, um, ChatGPT won't be able to draw any figures for you, or if it does, it won't be accurate. But let's try following its English word description and see if we can draw the matching figures with a reasonable level of intelligence. <laughs> Here's the derivation. Uh, Symmetric consideration, the sphere is uniformly charged, meaning the charge is distributed symmetrically on its outer surface. Okay, that I think makes sense. Let me just doodle a little bit, sketching that. So I have sphere with the charge uniformly distributed on the surface. Okay, symmetry, infer that electric field outside should be radially outward.
I think that makes intuitive sense. So let me not uh, challenge it too much. It goes to, you know, why isn't there um, like tangential components? I think it's fine. Um, the, you can use a mirror reflection symmetry to uh, rule that out. Um, but I think this is a kind of basic enough statement that at the level of a lower division class, I shouldn't challenge it too much. Um, and depend only on the radial distance from the center. So electric field is function of R only. Uh, apply Gauss's law, Gauss's law states. Yeah, um, so the the kind of implication is that the electric field could have depended as a function of distance and the angular parameters. Um, and it doesn't depend on this. That's basically what it's saying. If that makes intuitive sense to you, then great. Gauss's law states that. Um, uh, look, yeah. Yeah, is that choose a Gaussian surface to exploit the spherical symmetry? We choose a spherical Gaussian surface with radius r centered at the same point as sphere, where this is the small r is greater than the radius of the sphere. Yeah, so radius of the sphere is r, and um, this is my Gaussian surface includes that point uh, at distance r. That makes sense, I think. Um, the area of this uh, surface is 4 pi r squared. Okay. Simplify the electric field. It's radially symmetric and points outward. The magnitude of the electric field at all the points is the same. Good. And the dot product. So for dA, you ha should be thinking of an area like this. And with a uh, vectorial, this is the vector direction, surface normal for the uh, surface. And it's saying E dot dA simply becomes a ma product of the magnitudes, E dA. It's a necessary step in the proof to go through, and hopefully it seems intuitive enough. Um, you can factor out the electric field. Uh, now, did it explain that it's a... Um, Yes, I'm, so I'll say, I'm still reading through your last response, but in step, was it three or four? Step four, uh, um, uh, how can you factor out the electric field? It should say, at a given radius r, it's a constant. Let's see if it says that. Uh, instead for relies on the symmetry of the situation, symmetry of the sphere, I, mean, I got that, filled it, got that, all on point, ah, yeah, yeah, because of spherical symmetry, magnitude must be the same at every point on Gaussian surface. Yeah, this is key, it only depends on radial distance, yeah, good. Did it already explain that, or did I miss that? Ah, okay, okay. So be it's previous step three didn't fully explain it, and now it's a new step three is uh, spelling that out. Good. So, so yeah, in step four, I think it had a uh, factor it out. So flux is e four pi r squared, and apply Gauss's law. Uh, Q enclosed divided by that, solving for electric field. Yeah, that's the same formula as the charge due to. Um, uh, Point charge at the center of the sphere, have that, that. Okay, yeah. So, so yeah. So I'll say. I think I got it. Uh, plugging in numbers, I get. And let me just make a simple mistake of ignoring all the metric um, prefixes. <laughs> um, so for. Coulomb constant, I have 8.99. There's supposed to be times 10 to the power of 9. I'm skipping it. Times the charge, 8. Should be micro Coulomb. I'm skipping it. Divided by uh, radius, 5.5 squared. It should have been, you know, centimeters squared. So, you know, some power of 10 conversion. 
So I'll do that and I get 2.378. 2.378 uh, is the correct. It should say that I forgot powers of 10. Let's see if it says that. Uh, everything checks out. Uh, working on part B. Um, so hopefully as you're seeing this, you realize, oh, there are parts of tens. Um, calculate 0 0.16. Yeah, that. Now, that. That. Two point. What? It's different than the number I had. Did I miss something? Oh, I said 5.55. Oh, that's the wrong radius. <laughs> I didn't mean to make that mistake. So let me do this times 8 divided by the, the 16 squared. Okay. That's the mistake I meant to make. Okay, so uh, 281. So yeah, 281 times 10 to the 6. Yeah, looks like might be a little off. Oh, yeah. Oh, I think uh, I used the radius of the sphere. I got it. And let me put this in to point A the way. And you know, you should uh, kind of double check. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, numerical mistakes like this. It, it, uh, I think I've said this when I was trying to remember your names, you know. I would, uh, first uh, couple class sessions, I would guess your name and it would be wrong and it will be embarrassing for me. And that embarrassment actually helps me remember for the next time. And um, when you are working through problems like this, like recognizing your mistakes and being a little bit embarrassed in your own, <laughs> like uh, by yourself, um, I, I do believe that helps you learn. Um, that helps you not make the same mistake uh, next time. It's uh, there's uh, some sort of like emotional trigger there. Even though you know no one else might be watching you, you might not actually being you are, you might not be embarrassed in front of anybody. But the part of that small bit of pain, I think, helps you learn. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, so we have 15 minutes. Let's see what more questions remain uh, near the end. If there are good questions, then I can go through them. If not, I can do the um, do the one that I skipped. See, is this a good one? Maybe. Uh, let's look at the next one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a fairly substantial one. So let's do this one. Uh, this one you need to do actual integral. Um, uh, integral to figure out, I guess, uh, how much charge is inside. So, so let's do it this way. Um, uh, so I have a multi-part question. Uh, this is the question intro, and I tried something for. Part A, but uh, it says it's wrong. And I'll first give it the first part. And then for part A, l let me make a simple mistake. Uh, like, you know, you look at the question like this and you say, oh, I need to do an integral. So you do an integral without carefully setting up the integrand. <laughs> but imagine someone who's making that mistake. Is it that? It's just giving me all the steps. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll, let me just ignore the rest of what it's saying and just, uh, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'll say, I'm not sure about all that, uh, but this is what I did. And it says, and let me do the thing that I'm going to do. I'll, um, so for the total amount of charge, I'll say that's Q. So I say Q is equal to integral of R from zero to radius R um, of 
um, if I do density times the volume, then it's going to be right. So I'll just say alpha r squared is equal to one third alpha r cubed, r equals zero to r is equal to um, r cubed over three times alpha. Um, R cubed divided by 3 times alpha. And, you know, technically, ChatGPT already explained all this. So, um, um, let me do it this way. I'm just going to get an instance of GIMP. What? So that I can um, uh, get rid of the, those texts, it might confuse ChatGPT. So I'll uh, paste in a, a version that's clean. I can also move the writing around a little bit, but I think at some point that's going to be so annoying. Um, so let me just get rid of those. Rid of those, yeah. And copy that into let's see how patient the ChatGPT is. <laughs> yeah, really close, okay. Setting up the total charge by integrating the charge density over the value in the sphere, which is the right idea. It's then set up of the integral, yeah. So charge density is given by that. Integrate the charge density of the entire volume of the sphere. We'll use the spherical coordinates and integral of the volume element dv. So you can do it for shell, yeah. It, that's, it cuts out some steps, makes things a little easier. So doing it that way, then, uh, yeah. So let me start to correct this. So I'll, uh, I didn't leave myself enough room, so I'll just, uh, let's see. Um, eh, I think I have to erase. There's just not enough room there. So I'll have um, dv, which is going to be um, 4 pi r squared dr. Um, and then I think I can do the rest of the integral myself. Um, then this will be Uh, is equal to, I can factor out 4 pi alpha outside integral, 4 pi alpha, and the integral is now uh, r to the fourth power times dr. So um, that's going to be 4 fifth when I go through all the step, pi alpha r to the fifth power. I think. Is that what ChatGPT was saying? Simplifies that to the integral, yeah, the, yeah, final expression, yeah, yeah, factor 4 pi from the volume element. And actually, uh, it, this is the important part, the r squared from the, uh, yeah, correct the power of that, yeah. Yeah, it's not that this fix, it's really fixing this, which will fix the, uh, the power of r in the final answer and everything else. So 4, uh, 4 fifth times pi, oh wait, that was under basic, times alpha times r to the fifth power. So that's correct part A, and let me look um, for part B, what is the electric field outside the sphere? Uh, okay, I got part A. Uh, where do I start with the part B, A, C, screenshot? And let me paste uh, this in. <laughs> and again, it's Gauss's law. Electric field outside the sphere. Um, 
So yeah, total charge. So yeah, it's correctly identifying that calculate the total charge enclosed by sphere. And then for points outside the sphere. And this is, it's the same set of derivation that we went through for the previous question. So I will kind of convince myself that I understood it and just skim through it, not spend too much time. Um, so here, but you should feel comfortable with all the, each step of the proof argument to be able to reproduce it whenever you are asked to. You might be asked to in, a, in the required one-on-one -on -one meeting. Gaussian surface that simplifies to that. Yeah. So for E, yeah. And I think it, uh, yeah, pi's cancel. Yeah, simplified a little correctly. I said the sphere. Yeah, that. Now, you know, it's not really um, doing what I asked, you know, just giving me step by step. And ultimately, I think the burden is on you. Uh, to make sure that when you're reading through explanation like this, that you understood it. Then if any part is confusing, you feel like you didn't understand it, then burden is on you to um, kind of ask follow-up questions of ChatGPT. If you are simply copying the answer here, you might find that uh, later on when you have to reproduce the same set of arguments that, uh, that you can't because when you, you know, people fool themselves. You you read a set of arguments and you think you understood it, and um, and you know you might be, it, you know, you might be thinking that in good faith you are not actually trying to deceive yourself. But it really comes down to um, when you are working through a question. If you got a lot of help, then to the extent that you got a lot of help, you really have to step away and um, give a little bit of break so that you're not simply remembering what you were told five minutes ago. You had the time to away enough for your short-term memory to fade. And then come back, try working through it again entirely by yourself and see if you can. If you can, great, then you've learned it. If you can't, that's where you have to do the hard work of um, trying to figure out, you know, what did you read the first time that you actually didn't understand? And that's the step that takes a lot of time. So here I'll say, uh, great, uh, I got it. Um, for, uh, I try to follow the same step for part to C and got, uh, And got, um, uh, let's see, I, I think uh, uh, E is equal to, this is, would it be, um, uh, uh, got, uh, or got this, C attach, uh, but it says it's wrong. And let me make the mistake that's easy to make, um, or one that I think can be plausibly be made. I'll do alpha times, and I'll just replace the lowercase r with the uppercase r. That will give me r cubed divided by 5 epsilon naught, and I think that's it. And that will be wrong. I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Um, so I'll say... Um, I can still move this, uh, but it says it's wrong. Yeah. So um, let me paste in this. I think I can figure out um, what's what. Let's see. You basically have to go through the derivation again. But what will change is that the total charge enclosed within the Gaussian sphere will be, you know, not the total charge of the entire sphere. It will be a smaller fraction. So for points in, inside the sphere, yeah, similar process. The charge enclosed by, yeah, smaller this R. So uh, when you do that, it will be basically this formula with the capital R replaced by lowercase r. So I, I guess replace the wrong R. <laughs> Um, so this evaluates to yeah that it's capital R replaced by lowercase r, and then when you apply it, then I think uh, yeah this was surprisingly close, yeah um, 
I mean, I had an intuitive sense that it had to be a function of R, not a constant. So that's how I guessed it was wrong. Um, and yeah, that explanation, if that helps you, great. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, probably all the time we have. And again, the really the main advantage of a tool like a generative AI is that it can respond to you. It's interactive. So uh, you give it a try. If you miss something, um, you can ask ChatGPT to give a specific feedback. And if that interaction helps you remember the material, help you uh, for something like a detailed proof step, help you fill in the gaps where you might not have fully understood it, then great. That's how you should use it, like a tutor who's uh, helping you learn.